So can you really buy a car for free? Hi everyone, my name is Jamie York and in this video I'm going to be showing you the difference between assets and liabilities and how you can utilise assets to pay for your entire life. And if you're interested in videos around property investment, mindset, business and becoming financially free, then this is the channel for you and hit the subscribe button and it would really help me for the YouTube algorithm if you can smash the like button as well. What is an asset and what is a liability? So first of all, let's get out what I don't mean. I am not talking from a financial advisor's point of view. I'm not talking as an accountant. I'm talking about real world economics, how to actually make money and increase your wealth. So a lot of people will typically think, okay, what's an asset? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I bet it's a house, right? So most of you, you'll be thinking a house is an asset. Well, yes and no, and it completely depends. If I'm purchasing a house, let's say I've got a 200,000 pound house, I'm gonna have to pay 20,000 pound, let's say a 10% deposit, 20,000 pound, my mortgage, the interest rates, everything that's going on, the garden, the guttering, the heating, any cracks that happen, somebody throws a, throws a stone at a window, it's costing you money. So what makes it an asset? Well, and you want to write this down, an asset is something that adds to your economic benefit, okay? It adds to your economic benefit. What this means is each month that you have this house, let's say you start with 10,000 pounds in the bank. Each month that goes on, if you own and live in that house, do you have next month, let's call that Y0, the starting point, and Y2, or I should say M1, M2, do that month one month two that you're looking at do you have more or less money in your bank account well you'd have less right you probably have let's say nine thousand pounds so if each month you are down on a net basis that is a liability making it into an asset could be that you have a different property Okay, and I'm gonna show you how you can buy stuff for free by shifting your mindset from a liability focus to an asset focus within this. So if you've got this property, let's say it's 100,000 pounds. Now obviously it's gonna cost you some money at the start, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna rent it out. So on a buy-to-let property, you need a 75% mortgage, okay? So you need a 25% deposit. So you've got a mortgage on that property of 75,000 pounds. Right now, you can get a 3% mortgage, okay? You can actually get less than that, and you pay interest only on buy-to-lets. It's not a buy-to-let video, but I just wanna give the basics so it makes a bit more sense. So that's gonna be 7, 14, 21, 22, 500, 2250. So 2,250 a year in mortgage payments, okay? But you're probably gonna rent out a 100,000 pound property, probably for around 600, maybe a bit more. So that's 7,200 a year. Now, obviously you're gonna have some additional costs to come off, like your voids, your maintenance, your management. But you can understand that if you've got 7,200 coming in every single uh, year, and you've got 2,250, some management and that, let's say 5,000 going out, so you're left with 2,200, that is paying you money. Somebody is living in your property and paying you to own it. So you're gonna be making profit on a monthly basis, and that's before we even get to capital appreciation, which I'll touch on in a moment. So how we're gonna shift this focus is going from that liability focus to an asset focus. Now let me give an example of how you can live your life so that when you are making your money, you're keeping it, retaining it, and ideally growing it, whilst also increasing your liability outcome so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor and the exciting things that life has to offer. So let's say you've got 60,000, let's get rid of less house. If you've got 60,000 pounds, let's go through a car example. What car could you get for 60,000 pounds? Well, you know what, let's go get a Merc. Let's say you're a Mercedes fan. Um, what is Mercedes, is it that? Something like that, right? Um, so we've got a Mercedes, this is, I'm not an artist, you'll quickly be able to see. Here we go. <laughs> Should we start? <laughs> <laughs> 
so we've got our Mercedes. So this Mercedes, what you could do is buy it for £60,000, okay? Now, what happens with this is something called depreciation. We're gonna be looking at this in a five year window, okay? So the first thing we're gonna look at is something called depreciation. So what is depreciation? Well, depreciation is a diminishing in value of an asset. So if you've purchased this for 60,000 pounds, what then happens is as soon as you drive it off the court, that is going to go down in value. So we're gonna look what happens over a five year period, one, two, three, four, five, which I didn't just mess up at all before this and get edited out. So what then happens is as soon as you drive it off the forecourt, what tends to happen is this. So it'll go down like that and then it will edge out like this and then go like that, okay? It's probably not quite that low, but to give you an idea, over a five year period at a medium depreciation, which is quite nice for a 60,000 pound car, you're gonna have 51.8% depreciation, okay? Which means that 60,000 pounds car is gonna be worth just over 28,000 within five years. So you have lost 32,000 pounds of your money plus any maintenance, plus the new tires, oil changes, services, everything that you've needed to do, okay? So is that an asset? I would argue not, okay? But let's look at it from a different angle, okay? Let's get rid of this. Let's say we've got the same 60,000 pounds and we still want to get that 60,000 pound car. Well, I can tell you a 60,000 pound car is gonna cost you roughly 500 a month. You can definitely get them cheaper, but let's keep it simple with 500 a month, okay? So, wow, didn't expect those many colors. So 500 pounds a month liability. So where are we gonna get that money from? Well, let's think asset. So what assets do we like? If you've been following my channel, you know I'm obsessed with property. I love property investment. So what can we do with 60,000 pounds? Well, believe it or not, you can purchase two 90,000 pound properties. Right, hearing that for the first time, you might be like, well, where's your math coming from there, mate, okay? So what we're gonna do is instead of buying one property, we're gonna buy two. We're gonna buy these at 90,000 pounds. Now, 90,000 pounds is a pretty good sweet point for buy-to-let property, to give you an idea. So what we're gonna need from this is a deposit. We're gonna need some money for stamp duty, and then some legals. Okay, we're gonna assume that these properties are already buy-to-let quality, they're not needing a major refurbishment, and that's where we're gonna see where we're at. Okay, so 60,000 pounds, we are going to need 25% of 90,000, which is 22,500. We're gonna need stamp duty on a, uh, a 90,000 pound property, which is gonna be 2,700. And then let's say you've got around 1,500 for legals and fees within that. So if we add that up quickly, we are at 26,700, I think. 26,700, which means at the end of that, you've got 2,300 left times, in fact, all of it is times two. Okay? So what we're gonna have is we are going to own two properties that have cost us 53,400, which is 26,700 times two, and we're gonna have 4,600 left 2,300 times two, which is really good. So what we're going to do is we're gonna lease this car instead of buy it. And in general, remember, if it moves, floats, or flies, you lease, you don't buy, okay? And just remember that as you're taking it in. So what we're gonna be looking at is how do we cover this in the first place? Now, it's good that we've got this 4,400 left because in general, there might be some wear and tear on the property that you wanna factor in. But also with a lease, you usually have to put down some form of deposit. But these aren't specific and accurate numbers to the T. It's just to give you an idea of what you can be doing here. So let's look at a rental point of view. So if we go over to rental, Typically, with this sort of property, conservatively actually, for a £90,000 property, we're going to get £575 rent. £90,000, if you're watching this in London, I realise you can't get a shed for ninety grand, but go north of Birmingham, there's plenty of property that you can buy for around this price and get a good rental return on it. So what we're going to have is £575. We're then going to have a mortgage. Remember, it's 75% of £90,000 at 
at about 3%, which is £168. Just trust my math on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off 15% off the top for uh, management and voids and any little things that come up, which is going to be around another £86. OK, so that needs to come off of the original 575, which leaves us at about 320 times that by two. We're at £640. Hopefully that's not too messy and you can make out that number. So we're looking here, 600 and 40 pounds now again that's quite good for us so what we're looking for that's going to be our net figure per month now you've got an extra 140 pound which is good because you know there's going to be some more costs that come up every now and then on the property but as a general overview you've more than got enough for that 500 pounds so see how that's a completely different way of looking at it. and there's one step even further that's going to be really exciting which i'm going to cover in a moment but in the meantime if you're enjoying this video so far make sure to smash the like button and leave a comment below of what you think about these videos because it really encourages me to make more and to confess it really does help with the YouTube algorithm so going a step further and what we're looking at here and I mentioned earlier is capital appreciation so already we have got a property two properties that you own so you haven't lost that sixty thousand pounds it's already there it's just not in your bank account it's in bricks and mortar which is well known as one of the safest investments in the uk at least so not only have we got two times assets and they are assets which therefore pay for our horrible car by my drawer in any way it's just getting worse and worse isn't it um, but paying for your mercedes which is a liability over the five years you're also going to have capital appreciation now on average um, since the doomsday book was created in 1086 or whatever it was property has doubled in prices give or take every 10 years will that continue to do so i doubt it but if we set a conservative growth rate of five percent i want to show you the power of compound interest now we've got a five-year lease on this car um, and what we're going to do is just get another one at the end of it right but here's what happens so on a yearly basis we're just going to very quickly go year by year up to year five and remember the outcome of the car is all we do is we're going to switch it for another car and assuming you've not done a dan who's my business partner who loves scraping all of the cars we get you're going to hand it back, no damages, and you're going to switch it up. And then you have to pay a small deposit, let's say four or five grand. On the next car, you're going to get in three to five years time. In this scenario, five years. But that's what happens with your liability. What happens with your asset? So remember, year one, and this is times two. Year one, you've got a £90,000 property. And again, just going back, we are going to appreciate at 5%. Here's the amazing thing. Every single penny that you get through capital appreciation benefits you because it is all equity. None of it is going to help the mortgage provider. 100% of this 5% uplift in capital appreciation is for you. So for year one, we're going to be at 94,500. And let's just go through this quickly one by one. Year two, year three, year four, and finally, year five. So what we can see from this is over a five year period, our asset value, bear in mind, times two, has gone from 90,000 to 114,865. Hope you don't mind me doing this. It's one of the only times I'll do this just to make the numbers easy. I'm gonna round that up to 115, okay? And you can take it off of the rental amount over a period. So 90 to 115, is a £25,000 gain times two. So let's just wrap this up so we can see the overall effect of this. So what we've got, Alex, <laughs> where are we? So what we've got is version one, we go and get a liability. We go out and buy this car and we invest our £60,000 in what we think, before you watch this video, is an asset but actually what's happened over a five-year period is there's been a 51.8 percent depreciation at the end of that your pro your property your car is worth around it's actually slightly over 28 
thousand pounds. So you've lost 32,000 pounds. But now that you've watched this video, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go out there and you're gonna purchase instead two 90,000 pound properties. Now, this isn't even thinking about your profit, which as we know, you're not gonna make any because it's going into your car, okay? So whilst you are making money, it's paying for your liability. Over the five year period, We've got two properties that have had capital appreciation. So again, we're gonna put minus on there. Capital appreciation on this of 25,000 pounds per property times two. So 50,000 pounds, okay? Plus the already you've got your equity in there of roughly 60,000 pounds, give or take, because some of it went on fees. In fact, let's not say give or take, let's take 10 grand off. Let's say you've got 50,000 in there already. So you've now got 100, adding those together, you've now got 100,000 pounds in equity instead of 28,000 pounds that you had from version one. So you've got a 72,000 pound gap in the positive and you've had a kick-ass car for five years. And now that you're handing it back, you've got none of the liability, none of the, the wear and tear to take over because they take care of that. As long as you haven't crashed the car, no added expenses. And now you can get the 2021 version of the same car if you want or a different car because hopefully you've managed to save up some more money where you can cycle this over and over and over again. And this will start small when you're younger. This will start small if you're just starting out in your investment journey. But the first rule of understanding how you can build your wealth in your life is understanding how you manage your money. And that starts with understanding the difference between assets and liabilities, which you now have from watching this video. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments if there's anything I didn't cover in this video, if there's anything else I can do to add value. And if you're getting something from this channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe and of course the notification bell so you're prompted as soon as the next video comes out. And it would help me tremendously if you just smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and I will see you in the next video. So here's how it's a liability. Okay, so technically you have put money in there. Okay, and we're gonna base this on a five year basis so you can understand. The first thing we're looking at is depreciation. Deep. It's fine. I don't know what you're driving there. <laughs> no, nor do I. Just don't drive a car. No, I can do this. Okay, you go, you've got a wheel, you've got a wheel. Huh? She looks like a dick at this front look. <laughs> okay, so if we go over a five year period, what happens? <laughs> We count to five now. Do you know what? Like, fuck you. You're doing so well as well. You I know. Energy. I know.